there was a huge tragedy that happened here. Um, this is a fluorescent bulb that broke. This clip thing is really old. It doesn't really hold on very well. It was kind of precarious. I should have known better. And it fell off and shattered all over everything. So what that's going to do is that's going to reset all of these boards because I am not going to remember what everyone had even though I have it on tape. Um, it's a lot more fun to have that um, the mercury uh, just destroy all of these these cultures. It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's a new day. I don't feel as crunk crunky as yesterday. I still feel crunky, uh, but today is election day, which is really exciting. And my vote is to play a little seven by seven ages. I thought before I do though, I'll show you some of the the hazards of my bedroom and what I'm what I intend to do about it. So let's start by looking at this table's position. Um, so here's the table here. It takes up a good chunk of the room. Not as much as the bed, but still a good chunk of the room. And it's right near this door. Because this door has to be open and closed to keep the cats out, because otherwise they do even more damage to the, the game. Um, a gust of wind from the door will oftentimes blow down these gentles here. Um, both cat and milky end up knocked down a lot. And sometimes that can also mess with the chits. I used to have the armies actually, th their units on, on in this area with them and they'd get scattered all about. So that's a big hazard. Um, I moved those over there. It's still kind of difficult though because I have to lean over to, to get them and I'm kind of clumsy. And sometimes I'm not so patient as to use my tweezers to take a thing at a time so it could get kind of messed messed up and then when I'm you know I'm excited with playing sometimes I don't put them back properly so that's a hazard um, another thing this is one of the few I, I tend to fill up surfaces as you can see I'm one of those folks um, and so you know this is this is a natural place to want to put something if you don't want to hold it in your hand so the reason why I'm saying this is because last time, if you recall, there was um, uh, a big uh, a, a light bulb shattered over here, so we had to pick everything up. And I decided to just play it from the beginning. Not the whole game, but just this aspect of it. So there's this weird kind of time bubble that happened, timed warp. Um, I went through and played another three Seven Wonders turns, um, and then it will be the players' turns over here coming up. But so I just want to talk about what they were doing. Um, no, and I guess I guess my whole point with all this is I might have to do that again and again. You know, this is a long game. It's going to be taking up the table for a long time, and life is happening uh, simultaneously, as at the same time the game is, and even while the game isn't happening, life is still happening. So things can get messed up. I'm just going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to try not to backtrack. I'm going to try to just keep going, and it could impact someone's chances. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, for those of you who watched my game of Chronos, part of the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, we had something called a time quake which actually got instituted as part of the game after the first time it happened accidentally. I'm not going to be breaking light bulbs, but I am going to kind of use that sort of ethos um, in terms of making choices in the future. So let's take a look at uh, people's cards turned out very differently. Same personalities, but the different hands they had and their different perspectives based on um, already having started the game changed their choices. So first of all, we have Flush here, who doesn't have an empire, if you recall. He um, threw down two two wreath cards. So he has these wreath points. That's going to let him use events on people. That really adjusted how some people played. Um, Giraffe played this one in response to one of his. Um, Milky actually ended up playing blue cards just so that he could protect himself from flush and um, have some sort of strength there. If you recall, the, the player, you can't play events on someone else unless you have more of these wreaths. So right now Milky has five, Flush has four. Um, Flush would have tried it for more if he could, but he couldn't. Um, just, you know, you gotta, you gotta play the cards you're dealt. Kat ended up getting a lot of resources. She likes to get resources. Um, she would have liked to get something else as well. It just, again, it didn't come out that way. Cowboy did very differently. Last time you recall, he got a lot of resources. Um, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, well, we're not going to, here, I'm going to fudge it. Uh, this is a rule in Seven Wonders that I 
I didn't know for the longest time until I played with someone who actually pays attention to rules a little more closely or has a clearer mind. Um, someone who thinks very logically about games. I don't. I, I don't tend to. Um, you can't. If you have one of these, you can't play another. You know, you can't play two cards of the same name. And I'm going to keep playing that, but it, it works thematically for taverns. I just. Uh, I, I was kind of in a rush this morning, and I wanted to get some playing done because if I don't do that, if I don't try to fit it in and keep going this game could really get bogged down. Um, but I was really tickled by the idea that Cowboy would get really get into like getting all this money just just cuz he he was got he got two taverns in a row. Um, the trade points will also help him cuz he has some trading um, empires. What else happened? Uh, we have different groups with science. Not as much science this time. And it wasn't for want of t trying. People just didn't have the resources they needed to put the science down. So now it's going to be only Runt and Little Red who are advancing, which is different than how it was before. So let's get back to the big map. So a little fun fact here. I actually, um, last night before I broke the light bulb, I actually cho went through and chose everyone's actions. I'm not going to change those, even though they might make less sense based on what what people put. Uh, just as a part of that whole time fart thing that happened. So Runt's starting things off. She gets to a start empire. Uh, I think she's one of the few that gets to. There are others. Uh, she ended up with three era one empires in her hands. So she actually had a choice to make. Um, she went with the the Pharaonic Egyptians here. Uh, partially because she's going to be able to get a leader right off the bat. But they're also a decent empire. Um, so the leader is tough. Tuthmosis, um, and I I don't think I can think of one that seems Egyptian. So she's getting Beowulf out of it, uh, which is pretty great. Put that there. And she's going to be starting a fight uh, right away with a uh, cowboy because he, he happens to be in Egypt, uh, which is a rather nice spot. It's worth five when you do production. That's the most. Flesh is back in the game with the Syracusians. Um, they're going to be right here in this island. They're another uh, sea power. So we have, let's see, I think the Phoenicians, yeah. We have three different sea powers here that score off points. Uh, Cowboy has one, Melky has another, and Flush has the other. Um, Melky is going to get an early start because he, he's the only one who can um, already build boats. But the others, if they can get up there, they're going to be um, pretty strong too. So that should be an interesting... A three-way confrontation. He's uh, also interested in the right outside of where the Etruscans used to live. So he might decide to get a little revenge on Giraffe, hit her from behind. Uh, it's definitely going to make her have to worry. She's between flush now and a hard place. That hard place being cat, as in cat. Add another sea power to um, this little this little sea see squabble here and that is Ka. She just got a pirate state. Uh, she could choose to go it's it's a nice it's a nice uh, empire to be because you get a lot of flexibility. She could cho choose to go uh, anywhere that's three spaces from another person. She chose to go here one because she kind of um, she can easily control uh, the Strait of Gibraltar here and have access to this sea area so she can get more sea than these um, these guys who are trapped inside there. And also, it's close to her other empire, so she feels like she can support, if necessary, the um, the Gauls, or vice versa. So that's a, that's a good position for her. She's in Castile, which is in the mountains, and that's, that's good defense. Um, unfortunately, she's not going to be able to... Well, yeah, no. No, she gets... She's not going to be able to get as much money off of other people trading. If she was close to a lot of other empires, she would get bonus money every time they traded. And finally, with their new empires, we have the Chow, who, um, if, if Little Red can keep him into next next time, he will be at, to be able to have both Lao Tzu and Confucius working for the Chow there in China. It's a nice, nice positioning. Um, Little Red also had a choice between different places to be. Um, they're nice. It's a nice positioning because no one else is in China, and if they score in China, uh, there's no competition. That's great. Uh, there are possibly two two other empires to come into play, um, and so if neither of those are Chinese empires, Little Red has a cash cow there. It's also nice to be able to start off in the New World if everyone else is messing around in here, especially people around the Mediterranean Sea. Um, you can just kind of expand, and if no one else is there, you you just you're just left to get points. 
Hey, we have our first trade of the game, so I'll let you know how this works. Um, Melky was the one who who started it with uh, the Babylonians, right? And he had to trade with someone in range. So the range is, is equal to your era or your age. He's in age one, uh, like everyone else. And so he can only trade with people who are one space away, which uh, makes it be the Phoenicians. Um, that's a that's a difficult trading partner for him because the Phoenicians are um, really good at trading, and you know he's not so bad either. What's his trade rating? Plus one. They're they're the same, but uh, Cowboy gets an additional plus three because of that. And so they each get they each get to trade a card, and the other person gets that card. Um, so Melky is going to get this this Danes card, which is worth. Five. That's the trade rating in the corner, and we're going to add four to that, so that's a total of nine. And Cowboy is going to get this card, Moore's, which is worth two, and then he's going to add um, a number equal to uh, blah, 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 three. So nine minus three is six. That's the difference. Um, Milky is going to get six bucks, and Cowboy is going to get to advance on the progress marker. Uh, is how that works. Or Cowboy could do it the other way around. He could decide to get the money and have Melky progress. He would like to progress, however, because Phoenicians um, get points on being furthest ahead. And not having science, this is really the only way he can go forward. So he's going to go forward one, like that. If, it, if Cowboy had initiated the trade, he'd be able to go forward two instead. And then... Um, He's going to get six over here with the Phoenicians. They're orange. And that's going to put Melky's Babylonians in the lead for money, which is very good for him. Because he's going to score a point off that. That's kind of a win-win trade uh, between Melky and Cowboy, and that's really the way Melky would prefer to do it. Okay, we're going to be having our first search. Um, we're in the in at the very end of our man maneuvering phase. Basically, uh, not not a lot's happened. People are just kind of spreading out. There's lots of lots of land for people to to take, and there's very little incentive for people to really be attacking at this point. Kat had a bit of an incentive, um, but she decided to just spread out and take the points for uh, having Europe with the Celt skulls rather than trying for the bonus points for beating anyone. Um, there's a lot of uh, difficult fighting positions right there. Uh, so right now, Little Red just moved into the Pripet Marches uh, with his ancient Iranians. They're really, I've said this before, they're really going to be hard for him to, to score points with, especially with these Gauls that have spread out. Um, that's going to be getting Ka three points, and that's going to shut him out of the Europe scoring though you know if he had if he can come in second which he is right now he's going to get at least a point out of them which is better than nothing so how this is going to work is she um Sienya there she, she, her stealth is yellow and the ancient iranians um they have a search rating of red which is not very good and so they're going to roll red versus yellow and i better get that table i'll be right back yeah, so they got to get a four or less to find her, which is rather difficult, but nope. That's okay. That wasn't their primary reason for going into the woods. Whoa, look at what the Phoenicians have just, uh, or I guess look at who the Phoenicians have just undertaken as their leader or gotten as their leader. Paradox, the bazaar. I have no idea how to use Paradox in this game. Um, basically, Paradox will just reverse. I guess it'll be used just like um, in Duel of Ages. It'll re reverse the stats of anything, any other leader within four spaces. So Paradox is going to be right here with this new, newly acquired lighthouse uh, cowboy just got. And so that's going to that's gonna mess with both Beowulf and and... Brother Gregory. And that's going to do it for the turn. We're going to take a look at the board stage so you get some sense of how things are progressing. We see the Gauls spreading out over here. Um, yeah, just kind of some mild movements. We had some empires starting this turn. That was kind of the main thing. I'll do scoring and progress. And let's remember, I, I've, I've been doing this rather spaced out, so I kind of have to remind myself too. Okay, so only Runt and Little Red's people get to progress. Alright, so here are how our tracks are looking at the end of the turn. Um, man, 
Milky is really dominating in terms of points. That's going to change. That could change after this turn. I mean, he's pulling in two off the Minoans just for being the only person who can build boats. Um, if you look here, both Little Red and Run now have the boat building capabilities. Now, neither of them really have boaty um, people, though. Um, Run's, Run's main... I mean, Runt could make use of boats, I guess, in Egypt, but she doesn't really score on anything in the water. Uh, I guess it doesn't hurt her to have have water. She could, I guess she could score on having the world in the water, but she, she has plenty of land in Africa to just spread out in. Her only reason for getting boats would, would be primarily to stymie uh, Melky, which I guess is an okay reason. So really, you got to remember, people are just trying not to be in last place. And the scoring in the early part of the game tends to be lower than as the game goes on, because the later empires have um, greater scoring opportunities. Interesting scoring thing for uh, Kat, she has two different people who... Um, two different empires who score based on killing other people. Uh, her pirate state here and her Gauls there. I think I think Kaz and Cat is a big up and comer uh, after she gets her pirate state mobilized. Uh, help if, if they had some boats. She, she's got that issue to deal with. Um, but if she can get their progress up and she can get them mobilized, she could be a good score. The Gauls are getting three a turn just for having a, a big spread there. Um, She's gonna have to get into some combat though if she wants to maintain that lead. She doesn't have she, the forests are okay, but they don't give as much um, money as these other areas, and she's not able to build cities, which um, also isn't gonna get her much money. I'm interested to see what Little Red does with these guys. They, uh, yeah, he's kind of split his forces. Um, was able to get a point with him. That's good. Uh, giraffe, giraffe and cowboy, or not giraffe? Yeah, giraffe and little red up here. They both have. Um, they're kind of in a similar state as Runt down here. They 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 have their areas to themselves, so they're they're all going to be scoring pretty pretty healthily. The people who are in trouble is Flush still. Flush is Syracusians. I mean, they score on on water, and they score on progress. Uh, he doesn't really have any of those right now. He needs to get a, an empire soon. I, haven't, I think we're going to have this space be when someone drops out. I'm kind of torn. I don't know. Uh, but I think we'll go with this space. Let them all have like a good, solid game. Because that's a pretty, actually, it's going to take a while for us to get here. But as soon as someone gets there, I think just one person gets there. That's going to trigger it. And whoever has the lowest score then is going to be uh, kicked down to the bottom here in the tournament. Next time on the real, well, not next time, <laughs> but sometime in the future. On the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Seven by seven ages. That's in the Pope leg.